Boss Rudin, former UFC heavyweight champion. Also the co-host of the Rudin and Ronaldo podcast. What's up, Boss? How you doing? I'm doing great, guys. How you guys doing? Great. Welcome back to MMA Junkie Radio. You're on with George and Goes. Thanks again for doing the show. Uh, how about that, man? Another guy from your era, Maurice Smith, a guy that you bled with. You guys fought twice in Pancrase. You both came from striking martial arts. You both competed to the high level of becoming a UFC heavyweight champion. Just got inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame. I love him, man. He's uh, he's such a good guy. You know, my memories from him, and that goes all the way back to 93. I remember him coming in with a computer, and he got hooked, he had boxes hooked onto his computer, you know, speakers, and he was already online. I mean, in 93, that was like something completely new. Nobody knew that, so he's a very technical guy. And then, yeah, the way he slowly but surely started fighting. That first fight he had with Suzuki with these weird rules. I don't know if you ever saw it. They, like, they put boxing gloves on. That was the first round. The second round, you take the boxing gloves off. And that wasn't, it was included with, uh, there was like bankers rules. And then the third round was boxing again, or Thai boxing. And uh, yeah, he, he knocked Suzuki actually out to the third round in Thai boxing. And then Suzuki beat him in a rematch in bankers rules. So that's kind of how we started. Same with me, you know, like a rocky road, you know, because we were strikers. Right. The game. Uh, boss, yeah, if, if you could just talk about that, you know, strikers having to catch up to wrestlers back in your days. You know, it was hard. It was hard to find. You know, he found, you know, Kosaka was a black belt to go to combat judo. So that's really good. And he got Frank Shamrock, you know, his grappling was also better, you know, and West would take that. So I think once I had a match, you, of course, you know, the, the, the wizard, and they started all working together, you know, but yeah, it, it was hard, you know, and it, it was like you said, you had to watch. Um, video tapes, like cassette tapes, and I would just watch fights, and I would see a finishing move or somebody that, uh, or a move that came very close, and I would just write everything down, and the next day I would try it out. I had one training partner. Well, the first year I didn't have anybody, pretty much. You know, I found Leon Van Dyke after a while, and uh, and then we just started sharing, and we started working together. So, yeah, but that's kind of, that's kind of cool as well, right? Because yeah. now you're only as good as your, your part, training partners. That's what they always say. I said, man, can you imagine if I would be back like, say, 25 years old and they dumped me in uh, Greg Jackson's camp? You know, <laughs> now you got all that talent to train with. Oh, dude, that would have been awesome. Right. Um, where, you know, I guess uh, what is it about yourself, Maurice Smith, and some of the, the, the people that have come over from the striking arts that have been able to, I guess, embrace that, and yet there's others that just want nothing to do with survival on the bottom or, or learning how to get up or sweeps or anything. What, what, what do you think it is about, I guess, the toughness or lack of from some of the kickboxers that they just want nothing to do with it, and that's why they don't go on to do stuff like you guys did in MMA? Uh, yeah, I call stupidity. <laughs> it makes martial arts if you don't. Uh, you know, like after my last loss against Ken, I came home. I was devastated. I'm not a, I'm not a, you know, I'm a sore loser. I don't like to lose. I really like winning. So, and I said, I got to change. I have to change. If I don't change, I can never, you know, you can always beat me. And then I just start doing it two or three times a day. And then my next eight fights, I won by submission. Yeah, one with submission control by decision, but the rest are, are all submissions. So you see, you can flip it around. And I always say, if I can do it, you can do it. It's not, I'm not better than you guys. Yeah, sure, you somebody has, may have a little bit of talent, but then you're going to have to work harder. And if you work harder, you retain it better. You know, there's all these things for um, fighters who have to work harder to get certain techniques. Well, these guys are most of the time very hard to beat because they might not be technical, but they work hard for it and they don't want to lose it. Even though you and Maurice Smith fought a couple times, um, and, you, you know, I don't know how close you guys are right now. I mean, w w have you had a chance to talk to him, or, or what would you like to say towards him about, you know, his career and, and uh, you know, these, these accomplishments, including Saturday's announcement? You know, I love it. I, I, it's a big congratulations to him, man. This is a guy I've been following for a long time. I saw him fight Thai boxing against Peter Earth and all these other Dutch guys in Holland. He was the first Thai boxer from America who also do, did well overseas against other guys. Yeah, he had, a few, he had a few more, but there were not many. Don Wilson, that was a really good one, but then Maui Smith is in that lineup there right as well, you know. So, yeah, it's uh, for a guy to do that at his age also, he's older than me, and then start. I think it is just because he was already a world champion in time because he knows what to work for. And what happens is, you know, you realize, uh, okay, I have to learn this game. He starts learning the game start uh, um, putting himself in contact with guys like Matt Jewell, what I just all talked about. This is just like making yourself better. So it's once somebody does that, yeah, the path is going to be paved out for him, and boom, suddenly he's a world champion. So for him to do that, and at his age, 
And, and on top of it, being a great guy at the International Fight League with the team, we had so much fun. You know, these guys were all great guys. Andrew Gracie, the whole old gang, so to say. You know, we, we were just experimenting, and we did it. And then for him to come out and do it, you know, and become world champion, beat Coleman, and defended his title one time, I believe it was against Tank Abbott. Right. You know, I mean, and then at the end of his career, I believe he won with a straight armbar. He beat somebody with a straight armbar. It was, it was not a kickboxer. But uh, that was fun. That's that, that's the closing, the closing mixed martial arts career, right? So finishing your career, you start as a striker, wrap it up with a straight armbar. MMA Junkie Radio. MMA Junkie Radio. MMA Junkie Radio.